In this video, I'll be doing the preview for Arsenal's upcoming game against Brighton on the weekend. Um, obviously, a very, very quick turnaround from the losing game. That's what it is nowadays. Every maybe three days we play. And that's what, you know, when you're competing for the Premier League and Champions League, that's what's going to happen. So, listen, every few days we have a game. And the next one is obviously Brighton this upcoming weekend. And yeah, you're getting straight into it. And um, obviously, on the Arsenal side of things, just had that, you know, comfortable 2 0 victory against Luton Town. First half was okay. Odegaard scoring. Smith all shining own goal as well and then second half not the greatest in our performance but we saw the game out professional job most people have described that as and I think that's very fair to say you know kept looting to very little we didn't create too much and we rotated a lot you know resting lots of players too so we did the job job was done 2-0 victory it will do at home against Luton you need to rotate the squad if you're going to compete on every front and that's what we did we rotated a lot and we got the job done yes the goal difference you know is still a little bit tight have to wait and see though and uh, yeah so you know job was done against Luton and we'll very much take that and then uh, where that leaves us in the Premier League table you can see here obviously I am recording this before the Liverpool game by the time you guys see this uh, the Liverpool game would have been played so at the moment we are top but listen, they're at home against Sheffield United. They're going to win, going to win comfortably. I'm just hoping they don't, you know, put loads of goals past them because you can see the goal difference. We have 48, they have 40. Let's hope, you know, they win a little bit, but I have a feeling they're going to win quite comfortably and maybe even be quite close to us when it comes to the goal difference. So by the time you're seeing this, Liverpool are going to be back top of the league. There's no chance Sheffield will get anything, especially at Anfield. So, you know, we're, the Liverpool will be top, but we're still second and just have to wait and see what that goal difference is looking like. But I'm hoping Sheffield United can, you know, put, um, stop them from scoring loads of goals but again I think that's pretty unlikely so you can see nothing's really changed from the Premier League title race still as we were all title rate well I'm just assuming Liverpool are going to win because listen they are going to win you know I would love to have hope but they have no chance here for United and yeah so all the title contenders have won and uh, you know that's just you know as we were pretty much Van City winning and that's it as well so you know as we were everyone you know not slipping up and that's what it is there's literally no margin for error if you slip up once you know you're not out of it but you're probably your percentage of winning it goes down significantly I'd say and uh, yeah that's why we can't slip up because yes you know Brighton's going to be tough but we have to win that's it we can't afford any luxury we can't be like oh maybe we can afford to draw this game nope you have to win <clears throat> but you know we're not at uh, top at the moment so we have to keep winning keep winning and keep up the good momentum and uh, that's the main obviously that's the main thing we have to do and um, you know I am confident yes it's going to be a tough game but the year we've you know the form we've showed this year I should say and um, you know we've not won a we've not lost a game this season I should say won one what, I think we played 10, 1 9, drawn 1, and the one we've drawn is against Manchester City at the Etihad, which is very respectable. So, listen, we've done our job, won every single game. I mean, how long is that going to keep up for? I'm hoping we can, you know, continue to do it. Yes, we've been scoring goals, but the defence have been absolutely solid. I think we've only conceded four, uh, four goals all season, which is, you know, absolutely phenomenal, keeping the opposition to very little. And the goals we do concede are mistakes of our own. So, listen, we're so good defensively, the def you know, uh, the right likes of race. Saliba, Gabriel, of course, they've been absolutely imperious, and um, but also our structure. The structure has been absolutely brilliant, and that's why I'm confident. Because even even if we're struggling a bit, I do have so much confidence that this defense can keep us in a game, and you know they can you know stop the opposition from you know taking the lead or even taking the game away a game away from us. So that's why I'm confident. Defense have been so good, and the attack again very very good as well. And we've been in good form. Why shouldn't we be confident going into this game? Yes, it's away from home at the Amex, but you know the form we've been showing. They, you know, we're title contenders, we're up there for a reason And, you know, we are a better team than Brighton You know, we, you can go into the details and that But the fact is, we are better, we're more consistent We have better players And in my, the managers are both quality But in my opinion, I think we have a better manager too So listen, we're in very good form at the moment uh, We should feel confident And, you know, it's going to be a tough game against Brighton They love to play football Different type of game, it's not going to be like a low block, I don't think I think Brighton will go for it And yeah, that maybe that will suit us more And I'm confident we can get the win Don't think it's going to be comfortable what so whatever that's why I think we'll see a much more stronger team against Luton because against Luton you saw the likes of Smith Rowe, eh, Zinchenko, eh, Thomas Partey, Reece Nelson. I think you'll see Saka back, Martinelli back, definitely Declan Rice. You'll see some of these guys back and rightly so because Brighton's going to be a much tougher game especially away from home. But I'm looking forward to it. We should hopefully put up a good fight and let's hope we get a good win. I mean you know I'm not looking to score three, four, five goals. We'd be absolutely brilliant but I think in the running just get the result any means necessary. Just get
get the result every three, four days. You don't need to do it fancy. Just get the three points and get out of there. And I think that's the main thing. We'd love to do it nicely, though. Have to wait and see. But it's going to be a super, super tough game, as we all know. I mean, I will touch on the reverse fixture. The reverse fixture was very positive. Obviously, winning 2-0 at the Emirates Stadium. First half was still very good. Uh, you know, creating chances left, side, left, right and centre. Not taking them. Second half, you're thinking this could come back to haunt us. But no, we score from a corner with Gabriel Jesus. And then, again, we huff and puff. Try to get that second. But you do come close to equalising. They miss it. And then Havertz obviously getting the second goal to steal a 2-0 victory. It was a good 2-0 victory. I think we outclassed Brighton. And we were very, very much the deserved winners. Even the Zerbi saying that, you know, no team usually does that to us. And he was very impressed. So, listen, we did brilliant um, at home against Brighton. But away from home, listen, it we the same type of game. I think, you know, you're not going to see a low block. But, you know, away from home, Brighton will have their fans behind them. And they'll be more, you know, more up for it as well. Even though they do have their own in injury concerns, which I'll get into. But the reverse fixture was was positive i'm looking forward to you know let's hope we can do the double over them you know last season we didn't manage to do that this season let's hope we can and i'm looking forward to the game but yeah getting on to the Brighton side of things and listen they're a phenomenal phenomenal team i mean before i get into all the details i will bring up their league position and you can see it here they are currently in ninth place at this moment in time obviously last season finishing europe this uh, this season they might struggle to do that a little bit and um, obviously again by the time i'm recording this the chelsea man united game hasn't been played yet if chelsea win that it could maybe be on level points of Brighton or above them I'm not sure but there'll be more in this picture and above Wolves but again don't know the result of that have to wait and see and if Man United lose then Brighton <coughs> Brighton could be closer to United as well they do obviously have that game in hand and um, but yeah you can see they're fighting for Europe they're obviously 6th <coughs> and 7th they're going after they're only a couple of points off that so they do they are a little bit inconsistent Brighton you have to admit but if they can become more consistent and pick up more results such as beat us that'll be a you know big uh, you know a massive uh, help for them then they'll try to get Europe again this season they were in Europe earlier, got obviously beat by Roma, and they did go out reasonably early. So they were well, not bad, they got at the group stage, but still they want to go through more. But they're out of that now, so they want to, you know, gain more European experience, and they want to try, you know, do well in the Premier League and get that European, European experience. And they have to wait and see if they can do it. They have good depth. So I have to wait and see. I think think they will have to become more consistent probably. And yeah, it's very difficult. But I have to wait and see. I mean, I'm uh, just to show off that inconsistency, you can see some of the results here actually. Uh, they obviously lost 2-1 to Tottenham in the last minute of the game. So unlucky. They lost that. Then beat Sheffield United 5-0. Uh, you know, who doesn't beat Sheffield United 5-0 nowadays? They're poor, but still very impressive result. Uh, they drew at home to Everton 1-1. Considering they were down to 10 men, maybe that's not too bad. But ideally, you need to be winning that game. Uh, FA Cup, they went out of that. Then they lost 3-0 away at Fulham. Uh, Fulham, obviously, you know, very good team. You know, Munez scoring lots of goals. But 3-0 away, very, very poor and not really ideal. As I said, the Roma game, they got beat 4-0. That game was pretty much done in the first leg, unfortunately. And they went out, you know, not really with a fight. And then they beat Forest 1-0. Then after the... And then, obviously, they uh, beat... Uh, sorry, beat Roma 1-0, not Brighton 1-0. They beat Roma 1-0. But again, not enough. They had chances, but again, I don't think they were ever getting back into that. And they're now out of Europe. And then, obviously... Obviously, they lost 2-1 uh, to Bright, uh, to sorry to Liverpool on the after the international break. And um, you know, do not a bad game. Uh, they obviously scored early. Liverpool though got a goal before half time, uh, and then you know they huffed and puffed. Bright and had chances, tried to defend, luck, riding their luck at times maybe too. And then obviously a bit of brilliance on McAllister and Salah get Liverpool that goal 2-1. And yeah, it's not bad, but not ideal. And then nil nil Brentford yesterday. Obviously they didn't do too bad. They, they had a few shots, had a few chances, but again didn't really win the game. You can see some of the results there. It's inconsistent. Uh, inconsistent, sorry. Some draws, some wins, some losses. You know, you can Brighton can give you anything. I wouldn't be surprised if they beat a team maybe 4-0, or they could lose to that same team 4-0. So very, very interesting. And that's what you get with the manager Roberto De Zerbi. And I've been very, very impressed with uh, De Zerbi, you have to admit. Obviously, you know, when Graham Potter left, you'd see how are Brighton gonna do. Last season did brilliant to get them Europe. This season, still in the top 10, very, very good, but obviously struggling more than not. But I think you have to give him a bit of sympathy. Some people say now, oh, the Zerbi's a fraud, stuff like that, because he's doing look what he's doing. I think that's a little bit harsh because for Brighton, it's so tough. They lost the likes of what? They lost the likes of Caicedo. Uh, to be fair, Robert, Santa, Robert Sanchez, they weren't losing anyway. But they lost Caicedo, who's massive. They lost uh, Alexis McAllister, who's massive. And they lose players every year. And, you know, he's getting forced to replace them with young players who may be good in the future. They're not quite on their level at this moment in time. And, you know, he's still in the top 10 with Brighton, playing good football. So I think you have to give Deserby massive credit. Yes, it's not as good as last season. But when you lose your players from last season, it's so difficult to replicate that with, you know, some worse quality 
these players. So the Zerbi, very good manager, and the football he plays is wonderful. I mean, he doesn't really like going long. He loves to, you know, play out from the back. He loves press baiting as well. And, he, you know, he's a very, very smart guy. He'd love to watch Brighton because they can give you anything. As I said, you know, they lost 4-0 to Luton one time. But then would you be surprised if, you know, they beat a team easily? Like, they lost 3-0 to Fulham as well. So they can have poor results, but then they can have such high results as well. So have to wait and see what this could be because we could they could beat us maybe 2-3-0. Don't think that will happen because our defence is good. But then they could also lose by a lot as well because he just doesn't give up on his philosophy. And you have to respect that. That's why I'm a big fan of the Zerbi. And, you know, he's been linked with, uh, you know, lots of uh, top manager jobs such as the Bayern Munich job, the Man United job, maybe the Liverpool one, even though I don't think they'll get, uh, they'll get somebody else. But still, have to wait and see if he does leave Brighton. But listen, he's a top, top manager and he definitely deserves a top club, you know, near in the future. But still, Brighton is doing a very good job and big, big credit to him and the team. And uh, yeah, if I'm going off some of their quality players, I mean, you can see here, are, you know, they have loads of good players. You can see Lewis Dunk, obviously, I think that's their captain. I'm not sure. Solid centre-back, had a few games for England. Obviously, a few mistakes against Lukaku specifically. But yeah, good centre-back, good captain. Can chip him with a goal here and there and leads them. Estupinian, obviously, come back from injury. Uh, very good left-back, very big fan of him. Goes forward a lot, you know, start of the season especially. Got a big injury, just come back and, you know, he's doing okay. So, listen, very good threat, Estupinian. Very good left-back. Saka's, you know, going to have a tough game against him. They obviously have Matoma. Uh, Matoma, he is injured for this game. You know, I think it might be till the end of the season, which is a big blow. Massive fan of Matoma. Brilliant, brilliant player. And uh, yeah, he's a very, very tricky and skillful winger. But he won't be playing this game, which is a big blow for Brighton. They've had a few injuries as well. You know, lots of teams have had injuries this season. I was just talking about Luton the other day. Brighton are one of them. Uh, they obviously have João Pedro. I believe he's now back. So, you know, very good player. Especially in the Evil Police, scoring loads of goals there. And in the Premier League, looks a very nice player. And overall, not like a, you know, pure goal scorer but an overall maybe player who can do passing skills stuff like that so very good player João Pedro Enciso massive fan of Enciso last season was brilliant obviously scored against us actually but scored a lovely goal against Manchester City and in this season got a massive injury again a player that's just come back so I don't know if he'll start this game but again massive threat even if he's on the bench very good young player too and I'm looking forward to see how he develops in the future uh, they obviously have Danny Welbeck we all know Danny Welbeck scored a few goals this season and um, scoring against Man United earlier in the season he's got a wonderful goal against Liverpool and listen big big threat obviously we used to uh, he used to play for us he used to play for Man United so we all like Danny Welbeck but let's hope he doesn't do a job against us because he's a big big threat very good outlet surprisingly as well and listen he's a good very still top striker so have to wait and see what he does I think he will start but listen let's hope he doesn't do uh, doesn't do much against us they obviously have uh, Adingra Adingra uh, obviously very very tricky uh, Brighton winger me personally I I really, really like this player. And, uh, you know, we all see Arsenal's uh, winger shortlist, the likes of Neto, Williams, stuff like that. And if Net if Adingra was there and we did try go for him, I would not be angry whatsoever. Still young, very much impressed in AFCON in the final. Can play both sides as well, which is so important. Very skillful, so fast too. I really, really do like Adingra. And listen, he's a massive threat against us. I'm a big, big fan of him. I wouldn't mind just looking at him in the summer. Have to wait and see how much he would potentially cost. But listen, top, top player. The fact he can play both sides is such a, you know, compliment to him as well. That's how good he is. And, then um, you know, in my opinion, probably their biggest threat considering their injuries. And he's a lovely player. I'm a massive fan of Adingra. Just his play style as well. And listen, love watching him play. Hopefully he doesn't do a job on us on uh, Saturday, obviously. But still, love watching Adingra. Brilliant player. And uh, Evan Ferguson, obviously... We really like Kim Arsenal as a striker as a striker option. Brighton would cost a silly amount. And to be honest, it's not worth the money at the moment. Doesn't even start every game. He's still very raw. In this future, he will be a top quality striker. At this moment in time, though, he's not quite there. Still a very good player, though. Could start this game. I think it will be well, but though. But very, very good uh, striker Evan Ferguson is. And yeah, he will be a big threat if he does play. Even off the bench, too. And then, yeah, you can see some of their players there. Listen, they have top, top quality players. They have top quality manager. Just inconsistent. That's what it is. They're inconsistent consistent and hopefully we can take advantage of that at, at their place they do have a you know i think they're okay at that actually they don't lose all the time they definitely give teams a good game they don't get smashed too often even though they are you know pretty open to doing that as well but yeah have to wait and see i'm looking forward
forward to it though. Arsenal versus Brighton, two teams who love to play football and it should be a pretty good game in my opinion. But just as a little summary, listen, I'm, I am looking forward to it because, you know, recently we, we recently we do come across low blocks and I don't think Brighton are going to do that. I don't, you know, I'll be surprised if they do that. I think they're going to be like, no, we can play football. We can take this game to Arsenal. They all, you know, it can be pretty open in transition, you know, that being the reason. So maybe the likes of maybe Saka, Martinelli, maybe they can thrive in this game. And that, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Brighton played such lovely football and even if we do if we do win this game I'm still big admirers of them I have to wait and see how they look next season because again they are you know they are um, vulnerable I should say to maybe losing their manager and losing some of their top players but listen good team and I'm looking forward to the game you know I, uh, it's a weird one as a prediction I'm going to go I think we will concede because Brighton love to play football and they don't give up as well I'm going to go 3-1 Arsenal I'm going to go 3-1 because I think we will win and we simply have to win from our perspective if we drop any points, Man City and Liverpool, I don't think they're going to be dropping points anytime soon. Even though Liverpool play Man United, so let's hope they can do us a favour. Uh, but yeah, you know, we need to put the pressure on them because even if they do do us a favour, you can't be dropping points and letting your title levels go ahead of you, especially in the running. Yes, it's big pressure. Yes, it's no margin for error. And yes, it's, you know, quite annoying how good the other teams are as well. But still, that's the Premier League. That's what we signed up for. And when you're competing at the elite, you need to be elite every single week, in my opinion. And, you know, the pressure is there and we need to take it advantage of that pressure and you know continue to do it from Brighton's point of view they're gonna want to spoil the party as well not only to ruin our title chances but also to benefit themselves they're going to want to get try get into Europe because they still have a big chance of that and they want to show you know there's great lots of people going to be watching this game and maybe Deserby can auction himself off as well to show managers why he should be you know at their club but listen from Brighton can't disrespect them at all because they're a top quality team play wonderful football and listen they're a very 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 interesting team as well because they can be mixed but I'm looking forward to it. Should be a good game. Two top quality teams. Two top quality coaches with some great players. And I'm looking forward to see how we can hopefully win this. And I'm looking forward to see the final result. Let's hope it's a positive one. But yeah, that's really it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And make sure you let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below about the Brighton side of things. The Arsenal side of things. Let me know all your thoughts on that as well. And, you know, let me know your thoughts, obviously, on, you know, Deserby too. The Brighton players. What do you think our biggest strength is in this game as well? What would be your lineup as well even though that video will be out probably on later for later today actually because by the time you see this it'll be friday so later today watch out for that and after wait and see any injury updates looks like we don't have too much at the moment let's hope that you know doesn't change and uh, yeah make sure you watch out for the other couple of videos too that i've already done such as the live match review of the Luton game and the player ratings check those two videos out if you haven't already seen them they'll be very very much appreciated if you do that and uh, yeah but that's really it for this one leave a like on it if you've enjoyed it thanks again so much for watching subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one